So what I'm going to talk about in this video is the famous Newton's third law, uh, which states that that an action and its reaction are always equal in magnitude, but oppositely directed on two different bodies. So the thing here is that this law specifies that there is an action and reaction pair, an action and reaction pair, which always is equal to the magnitude, right? And this action and reaction pair of forces is equal in magnitude, but it is oppositely directed on two different bodies. These forces always occur in pairs, right? So this law states that action and reaction forces always occur in pairs always occur in pairs number two these forces are equal in magnitude they are equal in magnitude only the magnitude I'm talking about number three they act opposite to one another they act opposite so action and reaction act opposite to one another and lastly it acts on two different bodies two bodies are involved not one single body there are two different bodies which are incorporating this law so the action and reaction act on different bodies action and reaction acts on two different bodies i'm going to give you some examples for this which will help you clarify this concept further so uh, let's say for this example you have this wall and uh, someone is pushing the wall with the hand right right so this person is applying some action on the wall let's say this is the wall this person is applying some action on the wall and the wall will exert an equal but opposite reaction on the hand right so you see the action and reaction they are equal in magnitude but they are oppositely directed they are equal in magnitude and they are oppositely directed right so this is one example the other example is let's say you, you require uh, the, the, this third law is also required in walking you cannot walk without the third law the friction acting forward will enable the person to walk right the, the, the feet exerts a force backward on the ground, that is the action, and the friction would enable the person to move. So I'm going to draw it here. Let's say this is the person walking. So what's happening is that he's walking forward, right? He's walking forward. So I'm going to write here that the feet exert force backwards on the ground right the feet if the person is moving in this direction the feet the feet exert force backwards on the ground and so i'll call this force the action force and similarly the friction that is acting forwards the friction because friction is in the opposite direction so friction acting forwards right since the feet is pushing backwards the friction will act in the direction ahead of that the feet so friction acting forwards enables the person to walk and this is the reaction force
Another example, while swimming, the person pushes the wall, right? The feet push against the wall of the swimming pool. That is the action force and the reaction force of the wall propels the swimmer forward. So in the swimming pool, what's hap what happens is that, let's say this is the person who's swimming. So the feet will push against the wall. The feet push against the wall of the swimming pool. That will be the action force. I'll call that the action force. And similarly, what will happen? The reaction force of the wall, right? The reaction force of the wall. Although these arrows, uh, if you are looking at very closely, they should be of equal, since they are of equal magnitude, their size should be the same. So the reaction force of wall propels the swimmer forward. Swimmer propels swimmer forward. So these are some of the examples and this is not only limited to these examples. Let's say if a satellite is moving right around the earth or let's say there is a plane which is moving around the earth right. I call this a satellite. Let's say this is the satellite. This is the earth. So the satellite and the earth will also exert an action and reaction pair. Right. This is the action and this is the reaction right from the center of the earth. Right. I'll call this the satellite. So action and reaction. And uh, one other misconception that the students have is that the normal reaction to the weight is the reaction force of the weight. That is not true. The reaction force, let's say this is the object that is lying on the ground. So the weight mg is this. This is the weight mg. I'll call this mg. Now this point of contact, this is exerting an action force. This is exerting an action force on the ground. So this is the ground and this is the block. So this point of contact here is exerting an action force and the reaction force would be from here right from here but this reaction force is not the reaction to the weight the reaction of the weight the this mg is from the center of the earth right that is it the reaction of the weight is not this r this is the reaction of this action the reaction of this weight is this i'll make it with a different color So this is the reaction of the weight mg. I hope this clears the concept a bit further. So I'm going to write it in simple words. Action is equal to minus reaction. Action is equal to minus reaction. Remember this thing always. So when a body A let's call the body A, exerts a force of FAB on body B. Body B will exert, will exert an equal and opposite and opposite force FBA, right? So this was FAB and this is now FBA on body A. So mathematically it is written as the 
this is very important. I'm going to prove it with an example as well. F A B is equal to minus F B A. So action is equal to minus reaction as I stated earlier. So now let me give you an example which will help you understand this concept better. Let's say I have a system of masses. One of the mass is 15 kilograms and there's another mass which is 5 kilograms. Let's say a force of 20 newtons acts on this system of masses. So the total mass, the total mass of the system is 20 kilograms. So if, if I need to find the acceleration of this entire system, then I'll apply this equation F is equal to MA. So the force that is acting on this system is 20 newtons and the total mass is 20 kilograms. So the acceleration is going to be 1 meters per second square on this entire system. But what if I need to find the forces exerted on each of the blocks, right? The equal and opposite forces, the action and reaction. So let's say I'm, I'm going to start with this force which acts on this block, on the 5 kilograms mass. So I'll call this force the action force and let's say this action force is FAB. This is block A, this is block B. So let's say this is this force is FAB. So my answer would be mass into acceleration. So the mass is 5 and the acceleration of the entire system is 1. So I can write here 1. So this is 5 newtons. So the force that is acting on block B due to block A is 5 newtons. But what about the force which is acting on block of 15 kilograms of mass? So that force that force is this force and then I'll call that force FBA right so this FBA is we need that we need to calculate so I'm gonna say here that two of the forces are acting so this is 20 Newton force and this is this force FBA I'll call this force X as FBA I'll call this X X is equal to FBA let's say so 20 plus X is equal to the mass into acceleration so 20 plus x the mass is 15 kilograms of this block a and the acceleration is 1 so the x is going to be 15 minus 20 which is equivalent to minus 5 newton and this shows that fba is equal to minus 5 newton so you see that uh, this 5 Newton is acting on block B due to block A and minus 5, the signs are opposite. It is acting on block A due to block B. Right. So let me give you another example uh, regarding Newton's third law. Let's say <clears throat> you throw this ball. This is the earth. This is the surface of the earth and this is the ball. When you throw this ball upwards, what happens? This ball and the earth will have an equal and opposite force of action and reaction. Right? Since the mass of this ball is so small, it will accelerate. But this earth will also accelerate in the opposite direction. But the mass is so huge that that acceleration will not be noticeable. That will not be noticeable. Not at all. Similarly, if you throw a ball downwards towards the earth's surface. Now what will happen? The earth will also move towards the ball. But again, since the mass of the earth is so large, it's so large that that acceleration would have a non-significant result on this, uh, this motion of the earth. Since F is equal to MA, and you know that the mass of the earth is so large and 10 raised to power 24, right? So you see that the force, let's say the force is 100 newtons. Let's say the force is 100 newtons. And let's say the mass of the earth is, let's say, 6.0 into 10 raised to power 24 kilograms. So you see the acceleration is so less. It's so less. And if I, if, I, if I talk about the acceleration of the ball, let's say the force on the ball is 
100 and I apply this formula MA and you see that acceleration is going to be 10 meter per second square since let's say the force is 100 and let's say the mass is 10 kilograms so the acceleration is the gravitational acceleration which is taken as 10 meter per second square on the earth's surface so i hope you enjoyed the video regarding the newton's third law